Good evening, everyone. We are gonna start slowly letting people trickle in, um, give it a few more seconds. I know sometimes Zoom can choose to decide to update at the worst possible time. So we'll give it a few seconds to let everybody kind of trickle in and then we will get started. We are so excited to have you here for the U Online information session for our master's in public administration. So if y'all give us just a few more seconds and then we'll jump right in. All right, well, welcome everyone. My name is Allison Verhein. I'm one of the student advocates here at the University of Miami U Online. I have the great pleasure of working with students as they start the program um, and kind of through the first year in a bit of an advisor role. So I'm so excited. Tonight we have two incredible panelists joining us. Um, we will be speaking with them momentarily, but before we jump right in, I want to do a few housekeeping notes just so we're all on the same page. Um, we know that your time is so valuable, so we want to be mindful of that, and we are going to try and keep this information session to the 30 to 45 minute range. Um, we know that you are uh, likely getting ready for dinner. If you're joining us on the West Coast, maybe a late lunch, so we want to be mindful of that. Um, likewise, we will be recording this session, so if you need to scoot out a little bit early, we understand that as well, and we will be emailing out this session to everyone just as soon as it wraps up. We also would encourage you, if you have questions, we want to make this about you. So feel free to use this chat feature. We would love to answer those questions for you. Um, that's something that I'll be kind of mindful of, and we've got a few different people on the call to be able to do that. So don't be shy. Feel free to send in those questions to make sure that everything gets answered that you are curious about in regards to our MPA program. And then lastly, um, especially if you have any questions about our application, about financial aid, anything along those those lines. We want to hear from you. You can always reach out to us by giving us a call. We also have this incredible live chat feature that makes it really simple. So please, please don't be shy and uh, reach out to us. If you can uh, come up with any questions, we're happy to answer them. That being said, I would love to introduce two of our wonderful panelists. We've got Stephanie and Roxana joining us this evening. Um, so ladies, I will let y'all introduce yourselves. Uh, Stephanie, if maybe you want to get started and then we can switch it over to Roxana. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me again on this panel. It's been a joy doing this since 2018. Um, and I've learned so much through the process and have been able to help students along the way. So I am Stephanie, Dr. Stephanie Thomas. I'm the Deputy City Clerk for the City of North Miami. I have been working with the city for about 21 years now. So soon I'll be ready to retire. I'm not sure when, I say that every year, but I look forward to answering any questions and um, hoping that uh, you get a lot of information from our information session this evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Roxana Lemus. I'm currently a child advocate manager for the Garima Lightham office. But prior to that, I do have some history in the criminal justice working in law enforcement. Um, I, am, I, am, I am a current student at the moment finishing up. So I have a, I've been with the program for about a good year or so with some change. And so I'm so happy to be here and willing to share as much as information as I can, because I can tell you this, even though it is online, this is what I consider my second home. So the fact that you're here is super exciting right now. Thank y'all so much. And I love the energy that you guys bring. And that actually, I think, leads into a great first question. Um, if you would not mind sharing with us, what attracted you to the online MPA program here at U Online? Um, what maybe set this apart from other programs you were considering? And then what kind of brought you to that ultimate decision to, uh, to attend? So I'll let Roxana go. Sounds like a plan. Well, so there's a there's a lot of schools out there that offer this, you know, public administration everywhere. Um, but what set the school, I've always wanted to attend UM since I was in high school. This was like my dream school. And, you know, when I was con when I was considering for my master's, um, I wanted something like a, a little bit, just a little bit. Um, 
a little bit more rigorous. Some were a little bit more academic. Um, and UM, what attracted me was just how, how, I mean, the campus is beautiful first and foremost, but other than that, I think what really drew me in was the enrollment advisor. I think that I will forever remember that experience because, you know, I called just inquiring information and just by having a conversation with someone at the university, I realized, oh snap, I'm not just a number. I'm, they want to know me as a person. And even when I did my, um, the, the letter trying to get into the school, like they 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 sent it back to me saying, hey, fix a few things here. So this, this, again, what attracted me was just, they treat it, they treat you as a human being. They look at you, they, they root for the underdog. And that was the kind of school that I was needing because the school is, for me, it is the school of second opportunities. And that's what the school offered me. So the reason uh, this program attracted me is one, I, I had a very busy schedule at the time. I had a family, young children, a sick husband, so I'm like the traditional type of student that likes the traditional classroom setting, but I knew it was not possible with my schedule. So I really had to find a, a, a balance between my education and my career goals. So then UM popped up when I was doing a, you know, a um, Google search. And I said, you know what, this has always been my school and always wanted to attend University of Miami. Let me take the chance to apply. And Lord and behold, I was accepted. I was surprised. <laughs> so I was honored to, you know, uh, accept the invitation. And like Roxana said, from the beginning, initially, um, from the start of, uh, you know, applying and being accepted, staff has been just amazing and helped me walk through the, the process. And, um, and here I am today, you know, with the MPA. <laughs> That is so awesome. I love that. Thank y'all for sharing. And, you know, Stephanie, you brought up a, a great point. Um, we all have so much going on in our lives. A lot of our students are working full time. So um, would y'all mind sharing both? What kind of helped you decide that this was the right time to jump in and start pursuing your MPA? And then what do you feel like that did for your career tra trajectory? I thought it was a perfect timing because one, I had the support of my family, my husband, my children and uh, and you know where I was during that time I was a you know I had my bachelor's but I was in an entry level position and by me obtaining my MPA I catapulted to the deputy city clerk position right so that really helped me in my career and my goals and you know eventually I became uh, I I studied to become a um, had my doctorate in 2021 so. Um, it definitely encouraged me to go in that in that in that direction. Um, so I hope I answered the question. <laughs> that was great, Roxana. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. And the the thing is, is that I always say, you know, just if you have a thought to do it, do it. You know, don't delay it because time goes by so quick, and next thing you know, you have the same thought a year or two later. And you know, that's what I did personally. And the support from from the staff and the faculty here is just absolutely amazing. They they work with you. You know, it's one class like every seven weeks, and even though it's a short amount of time, it's it's a reasonable amount for those seven weeks. And and for you know, for me, I think that what has helped me individually is just, you know, you're so used to maybe thinking one way. This program really helps you expand your mind in a certain degree that I'm like, oh, my God, I would have never thought about that perspective because of the diverse backgrounds, not only from faculty and staff, but from their classmates that are from everywhere. That's true. So true. <laughs> yeah, I love I love explaining that to prospective students and um, about to be students is you learn a lot from faculty, but you learn a lot from your classmates as well. It's it's such an interesting experience to kind of jump in. So um, mm -hmm. I love that you mentioned that and kind of speaking of our faculty. So they do have real world experience and I love learning about the background of our faculty, um, but specifically they have that real world experience in the public sector. They give great advice, um, at least I think they do during the classroom instruction. Um, and then also during office hours. So kind of that being said, could you maybe describe a little bit about um, 
the kind of experience that you had within the classroom and maybe a little bit about why you felt like that was an important component when you were maybe looking into programs or even as a student, sort of the impact that the faculty had um, with their experience and kind of how they were, were teaching the courses? Oh, yeah. You know, I I have something great to say about every every professor that I've taken thus far. And, and the nice thing is, yeah, they have their office hours. They're willing to meet with you. Um, but again, they, they, they know, they understand that you have a family, you have, you're doing this program because you're a working professional, you have a lot on your plate. So the nice thing is, again, they're just willing to work with you. You know, I, um, I, I love all of them, but you know, there's one to the point where, you know, I was going a really through a really tough time um, on top of, you know, work and, you know, just a lot of things going on. And one professor in particular has a very special place in my heart because she took the time to actually speak to me and take the time to really help me through. And not only in the, in, you know, per, you know, personally, but professionally trying to like, let, like, let me look at your CV. Like they see so much potential in you that you can't even see within yourself just yet. And I think that is just absolutely wonderful. And again, you have a variety of classes with a lot of different, and, and it's, 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 you know, it's, of course, it's something new, like anything, right, that you're learning. But honestly, with without without them and their support and their guidance, I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't know where I would be, to be honest, if it, if it wasn't for them. Yes, I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Roxana. I had a very hectic, I would say, career. On top of that, a very ill husband, but I had to do a lot of traveling and on top of taking care of children. So they were very accommodated and understanding to what my needs were at the time. And um, very, uh, they made themselves available, whether it was, you know, Skype, I don't know if we still use Skype now, but yeah, back then it was Skype. Um, uh, we did office hours, they made themselves available for the students so that you don't feel that you're you're disconnected or don't feel that the other, at the other end, these professors do not understand because they very well do understand, you know, students and life happens, right? So uh, they try to accommodate you as much as possible, but at the same time, you know, make you accountable for your work and make sure that you turn it in on time. And I agree. Yes, yes it's a, this program is totally remote. Um, so I don't know if, um, uh, uh, the students know that, but yes, it's it's completely online, which is very helpful. And um, I can tell you, my laptop was my friend 24-7. <laughs> yep. It, you're absolutely right about that. And one last thing, you know, I remember, just to give you a perspective, you know, I remember we were in office hours with, with my dear professor and I said, you know, it's okay. When I become president, I'll change the world. And everyone's laughing and I'm laughing and she didn't laugh. And so when I met with her one-on-one, -on -one, I said, you didn't laugh. Why didn't you laugh? And she was, and she crossed her arms and she looked at me confused and said, why would I laugh at something that I know you're capable of being? And that, and, I, and that's the same standard that every professor that I've met thus far. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I, I love hearing um, how the faculty really kind of helped su support both of you. Um, and those were awesome examples. And I guess maybe to sort of piggyback on that. So flexibility is huge. I do love that it's a fully online program. You don't have to worry about commuting to campus and, you know, carving out a very specific time every week. You you have the flexibility based off of if it's work, if it's family, you know, whatever you have going on. Um, but one thing I know that I always work with new students on is saying you do have to develop somewhat of a routine. You do have to kind of figure out how are you going to get through this program? Because ultimately you got to be accountable to yourself. So what sort of tips, tricks maybe have you guys found that that worked for you that you might be willing to share? Um, because as great as the flexibility is, it does take kind of that um, personal motivation and, and knowing, all right, it's it's up to me to, to be able to do this. So if you had any tips to share, I, I think the students would probably be interested in that. So what I found worked for me, it may not work for everyone else, uh, the uh, benefit of being in the program, you usually get your curriculum, I believe, a week before. 
So I kind of, you know, not to over, you know, do it, <laughs> but I usually just skim through it like the first day, kind of have, try to, you know, absorb the information, right? And then maybe like the second or third day, I'll go back and look at it again in an in-depth way so that I can kind of prioritize myself and put it on my calendar on assignments that are due, right? Because basically it's the same routine every week. The, they're very cons the, the professors are very consistent with the curriculum as far as when your assignment is due, when you're gonna have a quiz. Um, so there's no surprises. Well, there were a couple, but you know, but typically it's, you know, it's the same routine and that's what helped me, you know, better prioritize my myself and also my work life balance, right? So um, that was helpful receiving that information about a week or two before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with Stephanie completely. Um, being on, on call, um, I, 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 you know, being called out in sporadic moments of the day sometimes or the nights um, could be, you know, you're, I'm, I, was, I was doing assignments in, in all different hours, but the consistency that I had to put in myself was, okay, meeting with, if a professor had open office hours, I was there. Or if I scheduled a one-on-one -on -one with my professor or eventually you can say, no, I'm, I'm going to be by myself through the program. No, you eventually meet someone within the line of the program that you just click with and connect with and that you guys hold it, it yourselves accountable. Because again, I, 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 again, I, I made it this far, you know, for a lot of reasons, but my classmates are a big, big, big help to me. And so they kind of like help me, help me kind of keep in line and vice versa. I love that. And it's funny you say that, right? I'm sorry, Stephanie, go ahead. Did you have something to add? No, no, no. I just saw a question in the chat. Uh, someone asking, can you double up on the classes? Uh, That's a it's already doubled up for the semester. <laughs> so they're like seven weeks apart. I wouldn't recommend it because that one class, that seven week is very, you know, inundated and you need to really focus on those classes. Remember, it's a advanced type of program where it's accelerated is the word I'm looking for. So yeah, you want to pace yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And to expand a, a bit more on that. So um, the way the program is designed, you take two classes every semester. The beauty of it is you are taking them one at a time. Um, so you're not having to necessarily double up on work, um, but you are getting those uh, two classes knocked out each semester. Um, but because, as you mentioned, Stephanie, it is at an accelerated pace, you are creaming an entire graduate level course into a seven week length of time um, that is not typically something that we see is um, we're, we're not really having students double up on those classes because uh, trust us, you're plenty busy. <laughs> you're plenty busy with it. So um, those were great questions. Thank you for that. Um, and we were actually, I wanted to kind of circle back, Roxana, because you brought something up about developing those relationships and you, you found that accountability partner. I was actually talking to a student earlier today who referenced that his class already has started up a group me um, and they were all communicating through that mechanism. So um, I would love to hear because I do think relationships are vital to um, an experience and, and I would dare say your success in the program too. So um, tell me a little bit about those relationships that maybe y'all developed throughout the program, how those kind of were um, initiated, how the program facilitated that, um, and just if you had anything to share in specifics to the, to the relationships that were built either with faculty or with your fellow classmates. I, I believe it, it all starts with, honestly, I, I believe it's just started with leadership. It started with the, with the professor themselves because they do a lot of discussion posts where you kind of share your it's a safe space where you can share your experiences whether it's good or bad and when you go to office hours or even just this like in the discussion post itself um, or you're working in a team in the team building um, eventually that's where how I found my people and my people found me I like to say and and again, I mean, because we're all we're all in the same boat, right? We're all we're all in it. We all want to graduate. We're all rooting for each other, and all of us are going through our own stuff too. So, being that accountability, not only in school but out, outside of it too, um, because again, we're we we all have a again. Trust me, this seven weeks long, but it is. You're you're be like, oh my god, thank goodness, this is only seven weeks long. Um, 
But that's just that's just for me. That's just how it kind of all started, all with office hours and with those discussion posts. But I probably one of these are individuals where I can honestly see myself for years to come. You know, because it's a very unique bond. Again, it's all online, but never have I felt like it's just a computer in front of me and it's just a regular online class. It feels like I'm actually at UM. It's wild, but it's just how I felt, how I feel. I agree, Roxana. So building the relationship is throughout your journey, right? In the two-year program with students that are coming in and out of the program. It's not just one, you know, set of students that you're having engagement as far as discussions on the boards but as the course goes along new students come in you make friends and then um especially with the relationships with the you know with your uh professors um after i graduated from um i still kept in touch with a few of my professors and one of them was dr west uh, rest his soul um, who also helped me after, you know, the program and helped me with my career as well. So the the bond is there, the relationship is there, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm still in touch with my my classmates to this day. So I, I enjoy, um, you know, having that fellowship with them when we do meet up and when we do have chats. So it's it's there. Although it's I know it doesn't sound, you know, uh, like it could happen, but you know, because you never really met the person until the end of the semester or end of the year. Um, but we did keep our communication, our line of communication on and support. That's awesome. That's also what makes, I think, commencement so fun is sometimes you're meeting people that you consider friends, you know, um, and y'all finally get to walk across that stage together. So that's awesome. Very cool. That's exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> I bet. Oh, that's awesome. Roxana, you're so close. That'll be so great. <laughs> Counting on the days, <laughs> but I want time to slow down because I I do enjoy being part of you know the program. I this again this is so cheesy, but again this is this is the school that of second opportunities. This is the school of opportunities. This is the school of this is where you know just a school of just so many different things and meanings to me. So it's, it's I'm not gonna emotion. <laughs> do me a favor. Share your information about your graduation. I'm gonna try to make it. Oh, you okay, can insist. I would love to meet you in person. <laughs> I love that. I That's awesome. That's so awesome. Well, and kind of along those lines too, uh, do y'all have like major highlights that stick out mm -hmm. about the program? Favorite class, favorite professor? Um, you know, when you kind of think back, Roxanne, especially right now, as you're really kind of preparing for graduation and Stephanie, as you kind of think back to your time, what are some of the the moments or experiences that stick out most to you about this? Oh man, for me, my I love all my professors equally, but <laughs> my my one professor that she is very near and dear in my heart um, is Dr. Marsha Abeck. She is absolutely amazing. She's so like intelligent. All of them are intelligent, but she. She was the one who really took the time to get, you know, to really help me get through it. And um, she, um, I'm not going to get emotional. She, uh, she really did help me academically and uh, personally. And um, she, you know, I think sometimes we can go on and on in our, on our, on our, um, in our school and our work. And I think sometimes what these professors do is that they, with all the hustle and the bustle, they look at you because they want to know if you're okay. And, you know, I'm, you know, for me, like if it wasn't for her, you know, she she really saved my life. And to this day, I, I it's one of the highlights. Her, one of the it was a it was a tough course, but she, like all the professors, made themselves available. And I think that that general you can forget anything you for, you can forget everything in each class you take, but that feeling, that impact that each professor has impacted me especially Dr. Beck, um, <laughs> um, that is something that you will never forget and you will carry that with you for years to come. And, and, this, and, and you know, it inspires you to, you know, give back to the community and no matter where you are. So it's my, it's real. Oh, very nice. <laughs> love that. So um, like Roxana said, I can't be biased. I love all my professors, but the two <laughs> that really stood out to me that really, I mean, I just have a soft spot for them is one Dr. West who unfortunately passed away and Dr. Beck 
I mean, Dr. Beck was like my mom, like Stephanie, you need to get it together. You know, she's like, yep. this is what you need to do. This is not right. So she was really on top of me and making sure that I, you know, provided the, the best product that I can as a student, right? And, um, and I love all the, uh, the courses that we took. Uh, I learned a lot from the, from the different courses. Um, as a public service already uh, employee, it actually enhanced my intelligence and my knowledge and help me in the role that I was as a deputy city clerk at, at the city of North Miami. So um, yep. yeah, kudos to all of our, our professors and faculty that, that helped us during the process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. West, he, uh, he was absolutely amazing. I remember I was, again, I was going through a tough time and I was doing really well and then I didn't, one, one, one paper and he, emailed me and said, hey, can I, can, let's schedule, to, let's, let, let, let's schedule to, to, uh, to a phone call. And we, we, we spoke that Saturday and, you know, he, he walked me through and he's like, I knew something was wrong and you were doing really well in my class. And then, you know, so again, it's just, it's more than just a course. It's more than just the papers. It's more than just that. It's, it's, again, it's just something that I can go to any other school, but I'm telling you now, this school will give you that for yes. sure. I have to add one more thing. So Dr. West actually looked out for me. Um, a lot of students didn't know that there's an honor society program for master students. And he was like, Stephanie, you're the perfect person to, you know, do this. I said, so do you think I really qualify? He said, yes, we're going to put you in. So I'm part of the honor society for the master's program. And to this day, I'm still part of that organization. So yeah, <laughs> I love Dr. West. <laughs> I love that. I love that y'all both had such um, incredible experiences and, and with some similar faculty. Um, it is, it's a great program with um, very caring faculty and, and faculty who do want to get to know you as a person. You're not a number, you're an individual and they they invest in that. And so that's awesome to hear kind of your, your personal stories there with that. Um, I've been monitoring the the chat. So if anybody has any other questions, I've got one more up here, uh, but certainly feel free to uh, to chat those in if there is anything that hasn't been answered. Um, but if y'all would be kind of willing to share, I know um, a huge piece of kind of going into the, the public realm, public administration, leaders of organizations must be prepared to solve all sorts of complex challenges with critical thinking. Um, you have a, a lot coming at you in different ways. I'm sure, Stephanie, you've got plenty of examples <laughs> with what you're doing. Um, so maybe could you both share, how do you feel like the online MPA program helped you and, and your classmates, I guess, prepare for leadership roles in public service and in the nonprofit world? So with the courses that are online, uh, you know, we do budget every year in October, fiscal year. Uh, in that class alone, it helped me to kind of understand what the budget is for municipalities and, and for counties. So it prepares you to forecast things, you know, five years, uh, five year plan, two year plan, whatever your department is looking to uh, I would say uh, accomplish within those goals that you set for your office. Uh, the courses definitely help you to think critically and my critical thinking skills definitely was um, enhanced during the time I was taking these courses because I had different perspectives when I went back to my office as I helped you know, our employees get through whatever issues they, they're going through and um, help them become leaders themselves, right? Um, I wasn't, I'm not selfish. I'm, I'm willing to help individuals along the way to uh, improve what they, what their skills are and also to learn at the same time. I'm not a selfish um, employee. I, um, I believe in efficiency and I believe in you know, smooth operations. So you, I, I can tell you now, a lot of my uh, colleagues, they come to me for answers when they have questions. And I'm like, why have I been put in this position? But there's a reason why, because UM online program definitely improve and enhance my capabilities as a, as a director of a, of a department. So that's, that's what I have to say. <laughs> 
Stephanie's such a beautiful speaker. <laughs> and it's it, and it's true because because the nice thing is is that the the courses the the program itself it, they touch upon not just you know government but every, different types like the private the public nonprofit they it's so well rounded to cater to to just to your organization you will you know you and you will see it I mean I, I worked in a in a couple right but organize different organizations but. Nevertheless, um, it taught me a lot. It taught me to be a little bit more patient. I think with leadership, it, it with leadership, um, with your colleagues, um, even with the volunteers that I manage, it's just a very different viewpoint. Um, that again, I don't think that I would have gotten if I if it wasn't for this and for the diverse backgrounds of the professors. Um, but that's it has helped again just the growth. Right. And mentorship, right? Because we do have interns that come on, you know. Um, to our organizations and they're looking for someone to pay attention to them to help them grow and because i've taken the time to do that i've had students that have obtained scholarships i've had students that was able to get their bachelor's their master's twice their master's so i i'm really happy that i can give back in that way and um you know and then also work with the p3s the public private partnerships you know within our city our local municipality because that's, I think it's important to collaborate with our with other resources to help build our infrastructure as far as the public sector. It takes a village. It takes a village. <laughs> so true. Well, ladies, we're so grateful to have you as a part of our village. Thank y'all so much. Um, this was so great hearing your experience, and um, we just really, really appreciate your time. Um, I do have a couple things to make note of. Um, if you are interested, we have a big deadline coming up. Our early admissions deadline is coming up on Monday, so Monday, March 13th. So um, highly encourage anyone interested in uh, considering to start this program. The application is free, um, so go ahead and, and jump in and um, start the application process because Monday is going to be a, a very big deadline for us. And as a thank you for joining us this evening, we also want to offer a $300 deposit fee waiver. Um, so when you submit your application, we will make note of that for your attendance this evening. So thank you for that. We always always love basically $300 for free, right? So um, that's, a, that's a great opportunity. And, and we do want to thank you for your time. Again, we've got Monday coming up um, with our early admissions deadline, so we don't want to forget that. Um, but if you do have any additional questions that maybe weren't covered tonight, or if you have specific questions about financial aid, scholarship opportunities, all sorts of things that come along with the admissions process, our incredible enrollment team would love to chat with you a little bit more. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can call this 800 number. We also have an awesome live chat feature. If that's a little bit easier for you, um, we offer for that. And then you can use this little QR code at the bottom if you want to go ahead and start that application, which um, we would love for you to do, especially with the deadline coming up very quickly. So feel free to use that or go to the website listed there and you can get started on your application. So thank you all so, so much. Um, Stephanie, Roxana, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday evening. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Best of luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs>